In this video, I'm going to show you a very simple, a very easy technique that you can use yourself when you're syntaxing a document to find out and get closure on whether a word is tangible contract or non-tangible contract. Now, I have multiple other videos covering this topic. However, this is an additional mechanic that you can use so you can get 100% closure on whether a word is tangible or non-tangible, which is the key to learning how to syntax that I've found, to learning how to syntax the most efficient way possible that anyone can learn. Now, this is the type of content that I prefer to put on my channel. I know of late I've had to make some statements and things like that regarding dramas and things that are going on. Um, dramas that others create that have nothing to do with me, really. This is the content that I prefer, which is actual quality, which is actually teaching something, which is actually showing you something of practical value that you can use if you choose to. I'm not sure how many other channels put these things out there, but this is correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, knowledge. So I'm going to look at three very specific words that I'd like you to concentrate on when you're looking at the next portions of this video. The words up, down, and very. And we're going to figure out whether those are tangible or non-tangible. So first, let's take a look at syntaxing these three sentences. Now we'll start at the end and syntax backwards. So we have very bumpy. What's the first thing we do? We look at the tangibility or non-tangibility of the words. Is bumpy tangible? Do we have a tangible contract with bumpy? My answer would be yes. So bumpy is either going to be a verb, adjective, or a pronoun. How about very? Is very tangible or non-tangible? Once upon a time, I would have said it was non-tangible. But using the technique that I'm going to show you in this video, we discover that it is very tangible. <laughs> Therefore, this is an adjective pronoun scenario. Now we have down one day, comma, up another. And we're going to be focusing on the words that I'm going to underline here. Okay. So down one day, up another. Well, is another tangible or non-tangible? I would call that non-tangible. Is up tangible or non-tangible? I would also call that non-tangible. So that's going to be an adverb verb. This, of course, being a dangling participle verb. Now we have a comma here, which is a break in the continuance of the evidence. So now we have day, which is tangible, one, which is tangible, and down, which is non-tangible, which I'm going to show you why uh, later on in the video. So that is a adverb, adjective, pronoun scenario. And now we have down and up. So these are both non-tangible. Non-tangible what? Non-tangible pronouns, because they're basically standing alone by themselves. Now we have black and white, preceded by very, preceded by is, and life. So we have tangible, non-tangible, tangible, tangible, non-tangible, tangible. Which means, again, we're going to have black and white being two fours. The and is neutral, connecting these two. It's a bridge. 
<clears throat> excuse me, and then very is also tangible. It's an adjective. Coloring, black and white, is is non-tangible contract adverb. And then life is basically a standalone pronoun, tangible contract. And we know that nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb. So there we go. In the first example, we're going to look up the word up. Is it tangible or non-tangible? So we see this says 1550s. It's a verb to drive and catch. And then it says from up. Adverb. So 1550s, that's the earliest date here. We look up up. And now it says adverb from Old English, Old Frisian, Old Saxon, Old Norse, Proto-Indo-European, Upo, Under. So this right here, it says adverb, that gives us a clue that up is non-tangible, because adverb is pure modification. And it means up from under, under, so there's really no closure as to what it means. And then also it says over which is also non-tangible. If you look up over, preposition adverb, adverb, uber, over. So that's how we know that up is non-tangible. Now we'll look up the congruent preposition down, which is also adverb. It's also non-tangible. Now let's look up another one that would appear to be non-tangible, but we're going to find out is otherwise, and that is very. Very is an adjective. In incorrect sentence structure, adjectives are tangible contract words. So we have late 13th century, very true, real, genuine. Late 14th century, from Proto-Indo-European, wero, which means true, trustworthy. That is tangible contract. We have a tangible contract with what that means. And so this is just one example of how you can use parse to determine the tangibility or non-tangibility contract with a word. Now, when you parse a document and you syntax a document, if you have any question about it, look it up and then you can certify it for yourself. If you want complete 100% closure on your syntax and your parse, logically you would do this for every word and the document that you're syntaxing. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. As I put in all my videos, if you have any questions about what I discussed here, or if you have questions about correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, or if you'd like to apply for one of my confidential video workshops, you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Although I put my email address in all the descriptions of my videos and I mention it in just about all my videos, I still have people commenting asking, how do I get a hold of you? Which tells me they're probably not watching my videos, but that's fine. I put this out here every time for those who wish to contact me. The techniques that you learned in this video can be applied to every single document that you get it just takes a lot of hard work and effort to do it in the process of doing that you will build yourself a foundation of work ethic and knowledge grammar knowledge which will definitely uh, you can use to build upon your correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar construct your own biosphere thank you